Well, hello guys and welcome back to another episode on the Dive Saga channel. A new year, so a new list of tips and tricks for the latest GoPro for underwater use and that's the GoPro 12 with my personal settings as well. So let's do it. Welcome back everybody. We've made it to 12,500 subscribers on the Dive Saga channel after a crazy year of videos. And although a lot of those videos were shot on my Panasonic GH5, which I'm recording this on, a lot of the underwater footage was also just simply shot on GoPro. Um, for underwater video specifically, a GoPro does a lot of great work for very specific things and so I think it's only appropriate that we're going to give you some uh, actual tips and tricks, no BS, uh, and I'll also give you my personal settings and then you can emulate those if, uh, if you like. First, I think it's important to discuss briefly what a GoPro isn't good at and that way you can just scrap those plans all together and avoid doing those things. And so one thing a GoPro doesn't do by its very nature, because it is a very wide angle uh, device, is you're not going to get shallow depth of field. So if you like those images where the foreground is very sharp and the background is very, very blurry, a GoPro is never, ever, ever going to achieve that. If you want that, you're simply going to need a device with a better lens. Secondly, a GoPro is never going to be very good at shooting subjects that are in the distance. So if you have uh, landscapes with specific details that you want to showcase, I mean, you obviously cannot zoom with a GoPro, but on top of that, you're simply uh, in a wide angle situation. Even when you change the settings to linear, you're always going to be so far away from your subject that you're better off using a camera with a zoom lens or with a closer lens to get those specific shots. The GoPro really operates best anywhere between three and six feet from your, from your subject, uh, maybe 10 feet, that's where you're going to get um, the best quality images. And lastly, it's important to simply accept the fact that a GoPro, no matter which model, simply has a very small sensor. So obviously when you're shooting on full frame cameras or uh, micro four thirds, you have a larger sensor, you're capturing more data. And I think subconsciously also people experience those sensor types as a lot more cinematic. So although there are some tips and tricks coming on how to make your GoPro look cinematic, the sensor size, regardless of the model, is always going to be less than what you can get out of, for instance, a DSLR. So let's jump into it. And uh, we have the GoPro 12 here specifically, that is at this time the latest model. If you uh, watched our last episode where we explored Cenote Takbelum, that's a good example of something that is shot entirely on GoPro. Yeah, uh, I often try to bring my DSLR, but in this specific case, I simply did not have it. So it's actually worth um, having a look at that video if you haven't already, especially if you're not subscribed to the channel, maybe do that uh, and have a look at what is possible with a GoPro in low light environments with a video light. Now, you may also follow us on Instagram and I'm going somewhere with this. That means you may have also seen footage of that episode, but if you watch that episode on YouTube, it's of course in 16 over nine, it's horizontal. If you watch it on uh, Instagram in the stories or the reels and it's vertical, you obviously have a completely different aspect ratio. So my first tip would be if you're not 100% sure how you're going to end up displaying the footage, you can actually on the GoPro 12 shoot in a square aspect ratio. So you're capturing the absolute most possible footage and you can then downsize it vertically by trimming it by cropping it or you can downsize it horizontally to fit your 16 over 9 screen without crazy loss of quality if you end up shooting in 4k 16 over 9 and then you crop it for a phone screen you end up sacrificing a lot so of course ideally you know what you are shooting for whether that be for horizontal display or vertical. But if you're not sure, my first tip would be shoot square and then crop accordingly. 
Secondly, we are now at Hypersmooth 3.0. The in-camera stabilization has gotten so crazy good that I think you'd be a fool for not switching that on. You are not proving anything to anyone unless you want purposely shaky footage absolutely switch on the hyper smooth there is no reason not to and especially when scuba diving sometimes you're doing other things having the horizon stabilized and having the footage stabilized a little bit for you is really useful my third piece of advice and i've given that before but it would be to shoot short clips yeah, a lot of mistakes that i still see people make because SD cards have gotten so good, the cameras have gotten rel relatively good at not overheating, even at large uh, image resolutions. Uh, so yes, you can shoot very lengthy clips, but I don't recommend it, yeah? First of all, it is going to be an absolute pain in the butt to filter through when you're trying to edit. Nobody likes to watch your super long footage. And for most mediums, you're either going to cut between different shots like we would do in a YouTube video, or you're going to use shots that aren't overly long, for instance, in Instagram Reels. So have a little bit of a plan when you shoot and really switch your camera off or at least stop recording until you see the next thing that is worth shooting, start recording again. It's gonna make your life a lot easier. You might have to name the different files and give a little description, but that's easier than scrolling through half an hour uh, of footage. The added benefit is also that your camera is less likely to overheat. Uh, and so if there is a little bit of moisture inside the housing, uh, at least the camera is staying cool and is not creating a bunch of condensation. Fourth tip is also something I think I've mentioned before, but it's very important guys to um, do one of two things you either stay very shallow or you use a video light yeah you have to choose because the deeper we go we lose color especially red being the first color to get out of the window and while the GoPro and with every new iteration better and better so does uh, a little bit of electronic wizardry to bring some colors back in other words to uh, provide automatic white balance which is a setting you can select and i suggest you do you uh, will find it uh, the camera will find it harder and harder at greater depths to actually accommodate that so by staying shallow having a lot of light uh, you're going to get often the clearest images. So next uh, episode, we're actually going to Isla del Caño in Costa Rica. It's another very impromptu dive that I did not even know I was going to do. And all I had was my GoPro. So that episode is shot entirely on the GoPro Hero 12 with no video lights. Last episode in Tagbelum is shot with a video light because it is such a low light environment. So it's very important to strategically choose that. If you do not use a video light and you go deep or dark, you are going to get pretty crummy results. Uh, but if you do stay shallow and in an environment with decent light, you will get uh, the best results as well. Next piece of advice that I would give is just dive into the settings, okay? It is very important to take some control over the settings. The GoPros often come with very specific settings that GoPro deems to be uh, what gives you that GoPro feel. But for most of us, especially if you're trying to shoot something like underwater or in our case, maybe like for, for your YouTube channel and you wanna get a bit of a cinematic uh, result, you have to dive into those video settings. And one thing that I actually recommend you to do is bring the sharpness down uh, at least to medium or maybe even low because that super, super high sharpness, that crispness that people associate with action cam footage, that may be great for certain applications. Maybe if you're um, dirt biking and the camera is uh, mounted somewhere on your dirt bike and you wanna get that gritty, uh, high detailed um, dirt flying everywhere, it could work. But generally speaking, you're going to get a much more cinematic uh, image if you at least bring the sharpness down to medium. Don't stress about it. You're not going to look at the footage and see fuzzy footage, um, but it will be less processed and um, a little bit less electronic looking. Another option that you have in the settings is standard versus HDR, even for your video footage. Personally, I still shoot everything on standard, again, because with HDR, a lot of processing is done in camera. Um, if you're not planning on doing any post-production whatsoever, maybe shooting on HDR is the way to go. But if you anyway are going to put this into your phone, your laptop, and you're going to do some color correction, shooting it on standard as opposed to HDR is going to leave uh, you with more options to correct afterwards. 
Then we need to talk about the ISO value. So in other words, the light sensitivity. So traditionally, ISO values are based on the grain of the film that you're shooting on, but this is of course an electronic device. So the ISO can still be set and then the uh, camera will use an electronic algorithm to decide how light sensitive you want it to be. Yeah, on a very practical level, that usually means that if you set a very high uh, light sensitivity, so a very high ISO value, the camera will actually group pixels on the sensor together to act as one pixel. So you will be able to catch some detail in low light situations, but there is a big trade-off and that is that your image will look uh, a lot less low in resolution. It will look a lot less sharp, maybe even grainy for a lack of better uh, terminology. And so this is maybe preference, but it does look in my opinion more cinematically to just limit the ISO value to 1600 or maybe even 800, depending on the type of diving you're doing, uh, so that the things will simply look dark. The camera won't keep trying to make them look reasonably bright, yeah? Uh, you're again, either staying shallow or using a video light, then you don't need those high ISO values. Um, the minimum value I would set at 100, but the high value the maximum I would go 1600 or even 800 if you're in very clear water. Then you can also choose the uh, the color profile and so you can actually set it to flat. That's another uh, tip if you are planning on processing the footage later. Um, if you are shooting on a flat color profile you will get images that at first glance look very washed out but that's again because the camera isn't making any real decisions while you're shooting. So nothing is being tweaked or fine-tuned to look a certain way. You're getting the maximum information. And so when you're afterwards in your laptop or on your phone, your tablet, you're tweaking the colors, you have the most leeway on what to do with those colors. If you allow the camera to process in camera while you're shooting, you're now very limited to what you can do. So um, for this channel, for instance, everything is always shot flat and that way we can actually manipulate the colors to help make them look a bit better, to match them between different shots or different cameras even, or to create a certain feel for a specific episode. And then there is also the lens settings. So GoPro is very known for having these extreme wide angle lenses. And so this is dependent again on the type of shooting that you will do. But when you're shooting um, scuba, when you're shooting underwater, I do recommend to at the widest choose the W setting, so wide or maybe even linear, yeah? Simply because the, 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 the wide angle um, style is very, very linked, even in our subconscious, to GoPro. And so again, when you're maybe shooting yourself mountain biking or skydiving, it may make perfect sense to shoot in this extreme wide angle view. Maybe you're trying to film yourself and your hand is only so long. Uh, so getting that, that action um, camera uh, vibe, getting that sense of speed also. Um, extreme wide angle views are very good at that. But when you're trying to shoot uh, and have something look a little bit cinematic, we don't associate extreme wide angle with that. You also have the added disadvantage that the edges of the frame will often be very, very blurry because uh, of course the wide angle lens has to um, has to almost stretch that image uh, to, um, to display it. So I usually shoot everything on wide or linear. Yes, uh, that is a little bit more limiting on an already small sensor, but that is one of the trade-offs that you make. Um, but you're going to get footage that all around looks a little bit more um, even and a little bit more professional. Now, as I said, next episode, we're going to Isla del Caño and I shot that whole episode on this exact GoPro 12 with those settings. The visibility was not even extremely good. There was really a visibility reduction at about 10 meters, 30 feet. So you will see uh, when you watch the episode, there are a few shots. We got some sharks in there that are maybe, um, yeah, not, not the best quality footage that maybe I could have cut. Uh, but there are also some shallow shots that are actually quite clear, quite crisp even without the use of a video light and so that's because of all the tips we used right now so let me give you my very specific 
settings for the GoPro Hero 12. If I know what I'm going to shoot, right, so I don't need vertical, then I typically shoot 4K 60 frames a second. Again, you can do square if you're not sure where it's going to end up, but if you know that it's for YouTube, if you know that it's for a horizontal display, maybe on your TV, your laptop screen, 4K, and then 60 frames a second, you could do 30 if you're trying to save a bit on battery life, processing power, and um, SD card space, but 60 allows us to slow it down just a little bit you can basically slow it down by a factor of two still get 30 frames a second smooth footage uh, and sometimes under the water if you have those rare wildlife encounters that helps a little bit being able to slow it down just a bit so for the uh, resolution and frame rate 4k 60 then as we discussed put it on standard not hdr just you choose standard so that you then can go into the options and set your ISO uh, value minimum 100, maximum 1600 or even 800 if you know you're going to shoot somewhere where you have plenty of light. Put the sharpness on medium, definitely not on high because you're going to break the image a little bit. Medium sharpness is going to look plenty clean. Then make sure that your color profile is flat, but you will have to do some corrections afterwards, but at least you'll have the leeway to do so. And lastly, the lens, put it on wide or linear. Maybe start with wide. If, if you still see aberrations in the corners, then maybe go to linear. Again, it depends a bit also. If you have to be super close to your subject because the visibility is not great, then maybe putting it on linear really pushes you too close image-wise. So maybe having a wider, um, lens setting can still be useful there but those are the exact settings that i use for shooting these episodes and so including our last episode which you should check out cenote Belum, super crazy place and our next episode isla del caño in costa rica so if you're not subscribed to the channel yet then do that if you have different settings or things that work better or if i said something that's absolutely insane let me know in the comments as well i always reply Thank you so much for watching, happy shooting, and I will see you next time.